All right. So, um, yeah, again, my pleasure to fill in for Tony, who unfortunately could make it last minute. So this is joint work, as mentioned, between a bunch of central banking people. So the typical disclaimer applies that these are our views. So over the last decades, banks have massively invested in information technology. And, you know, if you read what bank CEOs or CFOs have to say, they try to sell themselves by now as a technology company. For example, Marion Lake, CEO of uh, JP Morgan Chase, said, we are a technology company. And they spend billions and billions and billions on their IT infrastructure. So beyond the hype in fintech, also banks are really upgrading their systems. And so what we want to know is to what extent has banks' IT adoption affected lending to startups or entrepreneurship? And why do we think that's an interesting question? Well, startups are opaque, which means they haven't produced that much hard information. So their financing is quite sensitive to banks' ability to collect and use information. So it could be that IT maybe diminishes incentives to collect soft information and thereby hurt startups. But it could also be that IT maybe makes it easier to collect, uh, collect soft information, say, through whatever your Facebook page, and thereby help opaque borrowers. Um, on top of that, startups usually depend on external finance and bank credits and are quite important for job creation and productivity. So we think it's a, it's a useful exercise to understand how IT adoption by banks affects startups. So what we do, to be uh, more precise, is we develop a simple model of bank lending and screening and use that model to derive a few predictions. We then do county and bank level um, empirical exercises to understand how IT adoption by banks affects entrepreneurship locally as well as lending by banks to small firms or startups. And so our key result is that higher exposure to IT intensive banks means that there's more startup activity locally. And these results are driven by a collateral channel. So basically, IT makes entrepreneurship and also bank lending more sensitive to changes in housing wealth, consistent with a channel focusing on hard information. And depending on how much time I have at the end, I will go into some detail about the approach we take in identification, developing an IV for uh, banks' IT adoption. Okay, so let's begin with the theory. So it, it is a, a simple model. The model has a few key elements. So there's banks, which have high or low IT, and they randomly match with a, a few borrowers, which could be older young firms. Now, firms need external funds to invest into a project. And the problem is that the project quality is only known to the firm. So basically, you have information friction here. And that's why banks need to screen either through acquiring information or by requiring collateral. And so what happens is that young firms are opaque. Right? It's pretty expensive to screen them through information because if you're a young firm, you don't have much information for a bank to screen. You don't have any you know, long income streams or past history of, of um, sales. So what we, what we assume is that high IT banks are comparatively better at screening via collateral. And that's based on, on different pieces of evidence already out there. So on the one hand, there's an argument that IT makes it easier to transmit information, especially hard information across distance within the bank, so say from a branch to a headquarter. On top of that, IT has massively improved real estate related operations, which used to be very cumbersome. Everything was paperwork. Um, the appraiser spoke a different language than the banks and so forth. That process has really been streamlined through IT adoption. So when you put these elements together, what you get in equilibrium is that young firms, if they have enough collateral, receive funds mainly from high IT banks. All banks can lend to old firms because they can acquire information about them fairly easily. But then there's a, a share of firms with high quality but insufficient collateral which are not funded. So that's the equilibrium. We then do a few um, comparative statics and to get a few predictions out of the model. And I'll walk you through a few of them. So prediction one, our key prediction is that as the share of IT banks increases, the share of lending to young firms goes up, so there's more entrepreneurs. Prediction two, which is you know, consistent with what we know from other papers, is that as collateral values increase, the share of lending to young firms increases, simply because young firms use collateral to start their operations or expand. And most importantly, prediction three is the interaction of the two. So basically, for a given increase in collateral values, 
entrepreneurship increases especially much when there's a high share of IT banks locally. That's, I would say, the key, the key prediction of the model. Now, the model also tells you that the share of high IT banks, um, if it goes up, it fosters entry, but that doesn't come with the quality of startups. So it's not that, you know, the marginal startup being financed is getting worse and worse and worse. Quality should remain constant. So there's two more predictions, but I'll skip them in the interest of time. So basically, today I'll focus on predictions one and four and test them empirically. And so the way we do this is we collect data from the quarterly workforce indicators on employment at the county two-digit and three level in the U.S. So basically, I know that in whatever, L.A. County, in the manufacturing industry, there's 500 people working in, in startups, say firms of age zero to one. So the way we define startups, again, consistent with what's been done before, is that you define firms of age zero to one as entrepreneurs or startups. We scale their job creation by total employment in the same county industry cell to account for any common trends. Everything you see here is basically the share of startups moving. To measure IT at the bank level, we collect data from Aberdeen, which used to be called Hardy Hanks. Um, so they collect different pieces of information on IT adoption by firms and banks, and have, these data have been used extensively in, in, the, uh, in research. So what we use as a main measure is PCs per employee. The reason is that this measure has really good coverage in different years and across, um, across establishments or bank branches. Now, the further the time um, moves on, the better the data gets. So in 2016, for example, you get detailed data on the IT budget. But so what we do is we check that PCs per employee is fairly highly correlated with all different measures of that. So we stick to that in our baseline specification. Now, how do we define IT at the bank level? So basically, um, we run regressions at the branch time level on a bank fixed effect, plus a fixed effect of the location of the branch and time fixed effects. So the idea is basically we don't want IT adoption by a branch to be driven by local characteristics in that market because they could be correlated with the startup activity. So we purge our IT measure first from those local factors to the fixed effects. And then what remains, the bank fixed effect, so basically the headquarter fixed effect is what we use as IT. And that might sound a little abstract, but in essence, you know, if you look at a bank, it's not the branch itself deciding to install a new IT system. You know, it's, it's a bank at the headquarter deciding to update their system, and then they roll this out across branches. So the, the lion's share of the variation in IT adoption by branch is explained by that bank headquarter fixed effect. And here we follow uh, Pierre and Temer, so two of our authors, and their JME paper. So that's at the bank level. We then project this IT to the county level by basically, you know, taking bank level IT and weighing that by each county uh, number of branches in each county out of total number of branches in that county. So basically, county exposure to IT measures that there's a, a larger footprint of IT intensive banks locally. Okay, so prediction one was about the share of high IT banks going up and the share of lending to young firms going up as well. And so we estimate the following um, county sector level regressions. So basically, the outcome is the job creation of young firms scaled by total employment. And the main standard variable is the IT exposure of that county. We include a lot of controls here. Um, let me just highlight one, which is the local IT adoption by non-financial firms. So you could be worried that maybe, you know, in branches, where IT adoption is higher, that county maybe other firms are also using IT more intensively. So we, we explicitly control for that in our regressions. So what happens here is as we move from left to right, we type identification. But so let's just focus on say column one, that you get a positive significant coefficient on IT exposure, meaning that as IT exposure locally goes up, young firms create more jobs, so there's more entry, there's more sort of activity. And the magnitude is quite strong. So for a one-time deviation increase in IT exposure, you get 0 0.4 percentage points more job creation. And if you think about the secular decline in entrepreneurship since the 1990s, that's like 3 percentage points. Okay, so there's a strong effect here, suggests that the adoption by banks actually could have slowed down the decline in dynamism in the U.S. 
Now, when you tighten identification through controls, industry fixed effects, you get the same result. If you look at industries which are more dependent on external finance, so we do it in different ways, in columns four and five, you find that the effect is especially strong in more bank dependent industries, even when you include county fixed effects. So all of this is consistent with prediction one. Um, predictions two and three look at the collateral channel. So the idea here is that as collateral values go up, young firms can borrow more because they use their well collateral to get a bank loan. So we look at the housing collateral here because um, that's fairly easy to measure and has been shown to be important. And then we look at the interaction effect between housing collateral or house prices locally and IT adoption by banks in that county, which is prediction three. The idea is here, or the prediction is that as house prices increase, job creation increased by even more in counts with high IT exposure as high IT banks can use that information and process it easily. Okay, so if you look at this colorful table, um, in column two, you basically find the collateral channel, meaning that if house prices go up, startup activity goes up too. In column four, we introduce interaction terms, and again, we type identification, but so the, the positive blue colored coefficients here tell you, like prediction three said, that as collateral values go up, the effect on startup activity is higher in more IT exposed counties, consistent with our predictions. Now we do a few further exercises. So there's been work out there which shows which splits industries into those which require more or less startup capital or depend more or less on home equity. And in column seven and eight, you basically find evidence consistent with the idea that the collateral channel is more important in industries where home equity is being used more frequently or where firms require lower startup capital to begin with. And that allows us to again include county or county year fixed effective type identification. Okay, so that's predictions one, two, and three. Now the last prediction is about startup quality. So it's a bit difficult to, to measure startup quality from the data because we only have employment. So, you know, we don't have survival um, directly or defaults. But what we have is we have employment by age bracket. So for example, I know that in, in LA County in 2003, there were like 10 employees in firms of age zero to one. But I also know that in the same county in 2005, there were whatever 20 employees in firms of age two to three. Now mechanically, the, the firms age two to three in 2005 were the firms age zero to one two years ago. So you can construct transition rates as Adelino and co-authors have done to basically see, you know, to what extent do the firms or at least employment in the firm bucket transition. And if you, you know, if you find transition rates to go up or down, that would be indicative of a change in quality if they remain rather constant. I think that's supportive of the idea that it isn't much of a change in quality. So as you can see in this table, where we include a lot of you know, decimals after the, the comma, there's a very precise zero effect of IT exposure on transition rates across specifications, suggesting that you know, as more servers are being financed, it's not that the quality goes down significantly. All right, so let me spend the last couple of minutes on our bank level specifications. Everything I showed you so far was at a county level. So we basically just showed you IT exposure and the effect on entrepreneurship. There was a bit of a black box in there what happens to, uh, to lending. So now we move to the bank county year level and we use CRA data for lending to small firms. And we basically investigate how does lending by banks react to rising house prices and how does it depend on on banks' IT adoption. So what we find is um, that high IT banks, small business lending responds more to house price rises, okay? Consists with prediction three and the, the flip side of the county level regression I just showed you. And we also show that um, low IT banks respond less to local income shocks of counties further away while high IT banks respond similarly to shocks in close and far away counties. So why does this matter? It's prediction sick, I didn't show you this, but basically distance is a measure of, of you know, informational frictions. And the further away you are, the more severe they should get, the more important hard information should get. So the fact that a high IT bank responds similar to, to shocks or demand shocks in, in close and far away counties suggests that they use the same type of information in both counties. So maybe they shift away from hard towards, uh, from soft towards hard information. If I would show you all of this in, in tables, um, 
that would probably take too much time today, so I'll, I'll just show you the graph here where we have house price growth against small business lending growth for low IT banks in, in gray and high IT banks in blue. And you know everything else is in the paper if you want to see how we tie it in identification here. So one neat thing about the bank level regressions is that so at the county level, we basically had a two-step procedure. We had an IT measure, and we projected that to the county through depositor branches. So that's a bit difficult to find an ID. But at the bank level, we now use actual bank IT um, adoption directly. So that's a, a complementary measure, you know, but gives the same results, which I find, on the one hand, just really nice that it works. Um, and that's reassuring. But we can also develop an IV to instrument bank's IT adoption, again, following um, Pierre and Timmer, the JME paper, and another uh, recent paper by here and colleagues. So the idea is basically we instrument bank level IT adoption with the distance between the bank headquarter and land run colleges. So these colleges were established in the 19th century to provide technical education. And so we argue, following other work out there, that they act like a shifter in technical knowledge, but they didn't really affect managerial skills. So and you actually find that you know, a further distance to the land grant colleges also means lower IT adoption by banks. And when we use this instrument, um, we confirm our OLS results irrespective of the fixed effect specifications we use. OK, so I, I got no idea how I'm doing on time. But anyway, I'm, I'm about to conclude. So in the paper, we show that higher IT adoption by banks spurred lending to small firms and also is associated with more startup activity in counties more exposed to, um, to high IT banks. And our evidence suggests that this is working through a collateral channel, so through a hard information channel. So it's not that IT adoption by banks made them focus more on soft information, but rather made hard information more, more important. And so we think this matters you know, in the grand scheme of things for two reasons. So on the one hand, there's been the secular decline in, in entrepreneurship over the last couple of years. And some have worried that maybe IT you know, plays a role in that. And we're not saying it doesn't, but at least we think that IT adoption by banks is not the culprit. If anything, it helped startups to receive funding. Um, exactly. So I'll, I'll leave it there and look forward to the discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sebastian. It was just in time, I would say. Excellent. And we move on to our discussions. Who is Tiago Pineiro from Banco de Portugal? I believe Tiago is going to join us online as well. Yes, I'm here. I'm just uh, trying to share my screen now. Can, can everyone see my screen? Yeah, thank you, Sebastian. <laughs> for the, the thumbs up. Okay, thank you very much to, to the organizers of this workshop for the opportunity to, to participate in it and to discuss uh, this paper. Um, everything I'll be saying here doesn't necessarily represent the views of Bank Portugal or the Euro system. Now, I, I'm going to start my discussion with, uh, oops, um, with a very brief summary of the paper. I think there are, the paper has two key results. The first one is that IT adoption by banks increases entrepreneurship. And this effect is stronger whenever the firm's collateral, the collateral that firms use against their loans increases in value. Now, uh, the authors get to these results first using a, a theoretical model. Um, and in that theoretical model, they have young adult firms. The, the quality of firms' projects is, is private information, so banks need to screen them. And there are a couple of different uh, screening technologies that banks have. And the cost of screening depends on those technologies. Um, banks that adopt IT will have a competitive advantage in, in using loan collateral to, to screen borrowers. Okay, so they will be able to, the cost of screening those borrowers will be lower uh, by using collateral. And collateral is really particularly important. That's, that's the, an assumption in the paper. It's particularly important for the screening of young firms. Uh, and so other screen technologies are going to be more expensive for young firms. And so, so there's going to be a, a, a benefit, a young firms benefit from being screened by, by banks that adopt uh, IT. Okay, so the more than the more adoption of IT that you have, the more, uh, um, uh, the less constraints you have on young firms getting loans and getting financed. So you have more young firms in, in the market. That's, that's the main mechanism there. 
Um, now, the authors confirmed this hypothesis with an empirical analysis, and in that empirical analysis, they, they relate uh, banks, the number of, of personal computers per employee in banks with a share of employment by young firms, okay? And they see a positive correlation there. They also find a positive correlation between uh, the number of computers per employee in banks and the growth of, of small business lending. Uh, and then they do a bunch of uh, robustness tests, uh, you know, to um, uh, so that uh, some of the some potential uh, stories, other explanations for these relationships are, uh, fall apart, or, or uh, and and they also use some, an instrument variable to to confirm some of these relations and to confirm the causality that they are interested in showing, which is bank IT adoption causes uh, high higher uh, entrepreneurship. Okay. Uh, let me move on to my comments. Um, I think the paper is very well structured. It's clear. It's, it's clear. It's well written. A uh, uh, couple of words. It's polished, and you know, maybe it's kind of finished. Uh, I, I had a question mark before <laughs> before changing the comments in the last minute. I had a question mark on the finish because it does seem to be a bit or close to be to being finished. Now, I, I could spend the rest of my comments talking about the strengths of the paper, but I guess the role of the discussion is to uncover some potential critical areas that the authors may want to address or may want to um, uh, discuss further. So that's that's what I have next. So I, I find one of my first critical comment is that I find the paper strength is in the empirical analysis, not in the model. And I have a bit more to say about this in, in the next slides. Um, I also have an issue with some of the couple of assumptions that are in the model and that then have implications for the interpretation of the results. And that those assumptions that banks and startups are matching randomly. Okay, I, I don't think that's, that's that's the case, especially if the mechanism that the authors are putting forward is is true. Okay. And I also don't think that the location of startups is is random. So that's, that this has implications for how we interpret results. And then uh you know, I find that the, the, the authors do a very good job showing that the effect of IT adoption is statistically, has a statistically significant impact on startup employment. But economically, I do find the result to be on the smallest side. And the, a one standard deviation increase in bank IT adoption leads to a higher startup employment by, you know, an increase in startup employment by 0 0.37 percentage points. Uh, which is about uh, the author's document is, is about seven percent of the mean share of employment by startups. Uh, you know, I find this this number to be relatively small. What does it mean then? I know higher seven percent employment by startups. What does it mean that translates in terms of innovation in terms of growth? It's, it's, it sounds relatively small at the end of the day, but you know it's, this is like beauty. It's in the eye of the beholder. Some people see it as a large effect. Some people see it as a small. But maybe you can think about how you know how, if you could somehow relate this to uh, growth or or uh, uh, you know product innovation that, that might be helpful in in, in uh, making the case that this this result is not that small. Now, I w as I was going through the paper, one of the um, concerns that came uh, came to me is that maybe this causal relationship that authors are identifying or finding is, is really driven uh, by, by a common factor. So something else is driving both higher startup employment and bank IT adoption. And that's something else I thought about were, were the availability of technical skills. Now, this concern is partly alleviated because they use county fixed effects in some regressions. Um, and so that, that will be addressed really. But but in the Bayesian analysis, they don't use county fixed effects, but they can. Uh, so they use county controls. And county controls, at least as I read in the paper, didn't seem to have a measure of skills. But now as you presented, it, it does seem that you do include indications. So, you know, maybe this comment that I have here, we can disregard. It's just I was reading through the paper. I didn't really notice that, that you that were using education as a, as a control. So um, that's that. Um, the other concern that I had was that maybe there was some reverse causality here going on. So instead of bank IT adoption increasing entrepreneurship, we, the opposite might happen. Uh, you know, higher startup. You know, the higher the number of startups, the bigger the demand for credit from them, and in particular, demand through by using you know is, is using loan collateral. 
Um, and that will drive the adoption of IT by banks. Now, I think this concern is also partly addressed uh, by, by showing that, uh, by first measuring bank IT adoption prior to the sample period, so, so there is there is less scope for this for this reverse causality, and and also by using an, an instrument variable uh, to to measure bank IT adoption. So this I think that this concerns that maybe the result we are getting, you know, it's the the causal the, the causality is not there. I think this is kind of addressed in the paper, and I think they do a reasonably good job. But where I have a bit more qualms or, or issues is with my these comments two and three, which I now go into into further detail. So, uh, I think the strength of the paper is in the empirical analysis. And the reason why I do that, I think that is that some, a lot of the models, some of the most assumptions are unrealistic and they have an impact on, on the predictions. Um, uh, the first one is IT banks have, having a competitive advantage in, high IT banks have a competitive advantage in using collateral to screen borrowers. But, okay, why would IT adoption significantly lower the cost of screening borrowers through collateral, but not through information acquisition? Uh, yeah. Tiago, just you have two minutes left, please. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. I'll try to be quick. <laughs> All right. So then, then there's the issue about startup and banks matching randomly. I'll come to that. Uh, you know, well, there are a few other things that you, we can go into those details later. Um, the, the point that I want to make is that the model doesn't really do much for the, the for the paper. Uh, you don't use it as in a structural estimation, and it's you know the, it doesn't really contribute to the theory. So my suggestion here is scrap the model and develop the hypothesis intuitively using the model's discipline logic. Okay, so the model was perhaps very useful in the past to discipline your logic and your thinking. That, that's great, uh, but for for a reader, it's a distraction. They need to get into the math, and then they you know they need to develop their own intuitions. Right, so you could save time for the to the reader by developing your hypothesis intuitively as well. Uh, now on the banks. Uh, uh, Start and startups not matching randomly and, and look, not locating randomly. Let me just make a point. You know, if, if it's true that young high IT banks can then screen have lower cost in screening young firms, then young firms would want to be screened by IT banks. They would search. They would try to get credit from them, and and, and or they and they'll try to move to countings where where you have high IT banks, and um, and then. You would also want you will, banks would also high IT banks probably would also be trying to to look for firms uh, will try to be present in countries that have a high number of startups. Okay, so so I, it's hard to see that this this location and and the matching is random. Now, if you if you relax this assumption, I think a couple of your predi main model predictions are going to be uh, uh, are no longer going to be valid uh, if if banks high IT banks have enough capacity to process startup loans, meaning if the share of IIT banks is bigger than the share of young firms. Now, more importantly, the interpretation of the results and empirical findings is going to change. So the, you find that there's a difference in startup employment between countries that have a high and low bank IT adoption. And that difference is partly driven by startups trying to locate it themselves in countries with high IT banks, if, if, if this location is not random, right? So that they will locate in, into those countries. And that means that if, if banks increase IT across the board, you know, uh, then the, the impact on on uh, on IT, uh, the impact on entrepreneurship is not going to be as as big as the one that you're currently measuring, because part of that is going to be substituted by by firms, the firms that are trying to locate them in, in countries with high IT banks. Uh, right. I have a bunch of other miscellaneous comments. I can share the slides that are on with, with, with the authors. I, I don't want to go through them. They are relatively minor uh, comments. I just want to stress the very first one. Uh, the, the, the authors are interpreting these results in, in a positive light, which is uh, um, high IT banks will lead to an increase in the share of employment of, uh, of young firms. So that leads to higher entrepreneurship and innovation and whatnot. Uh, but you can see it the other way around. So. Bank IT adoption actually limits the growth of established firms. You can see it in, the, in, the, in, the, in that light, in cast in that light, right? So, uh, and so that that could be a, a problem uh, as well for, for growth. We don't really know whether whether entrepreneurship is is whether we have the optimal amount of entrepreneurship in countries with low IT banks or in countries with high IT banks. Um, and so, by maybe by adopting more IT banks, are favoring. Uh, uh, we are engaging too much entrepreneurship and, and not enough financing of, of well-established firms. Okay, that's, that's it. Um, thank you.
Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Tiago, for that. So um, just before opening up the floor for questions, maybe, Sebastian, if you could briefly um, cover, respond to the to the comments made by my Tiago. Uh, meanwhile, um, please feel free to type uh, questions in the chat or, or express your interest in the in the room. All right. Many thanks for this question. I mean, Tiago, a paper is never finished, obviously. So, you know, any comment is more than appreciated. Um, let me maybe focus on on just a few key comments um, in the interest of time. So. The way we see the model is just as you said. We think about it this in the way, you know, we thought through the whole mechanism and then design the empirical setting. So there's a there's a fair case we made to take that out, put it into the appendix and just get the results quicker. So I think we're actually um, moving towards that conclusion as well. Um, on the location and non-random matching, so I my gut feeling is that the biggest change would be on the quality, as you probably also highlighted. Um, I'm, I'm not sure it would change so much in the conclusion, right? So say the startups move because banks adopt IT. And in the end, the net effect on IT or on activity would still be because of banks' IT adoption. So you're right that the interpretation would change. The, the coefficient would be a compound of the two effects of startups moving and, and banks sending more to them. But it would still, I think, be because banks adopt IT. Um, but we will play with this a little and, and see what, what happens. Um, one more comment I, I just quickly want to get back to. So we make the admittedly stark assumption that high IT banks, you know, it, it's all about the collateral or the hard information channel. But we could relax that and say, as long as you know, the delta change in hard versus soft information is bigger, the conclusions would hold through. Right? You would still probably improve harder soft information, but as long as hard information improves by more, I think what we have is, is fine in terms of predictions. Um, all right, final, final point about reverse causality. So um, what is true that banks matter for startups, arguably startups matter much less for the bank. So, I think for the average bank, you know, the share of lending done to startups is probably in the in the lower percentage points of total assets. So I'm not sure you would have changed your IT model completely just in response to a few more startups, um, you know, maybe wanting some some loans. So we're not too concerned about that. Um, okay, I'll, I'll leave it here.